Nick, are you going to be doing your annual review and planning process this year? I think so. Um, you know, in the past we've done it um, together. We've like uh, went, went to like an Airbnb for two or three days, but uh, I am going to do it. Um, I got a ending n- near the end of Q4. And yeah, I guess this episode is going to go live, what, a few days before New Year's? So, so. yeah, got to get Q1 ready. I, I don't distinguish between New Year's and the start of a new quarter. It's the same same thing. Maybe a little more reflective, I guess. It's a very Nick thing to say. <laughs> Stephen, what are you drinking there? Well, that looks like a bourbon. This is a very lovely bourbon that Kyle bought me for my birthday. Nice. Is that a Glen Cairn glass? It is a Glen Cairn glass. You're so bougie, Stephen. You can't even help it, can you? So bougie. Pretty bougie for down 71. Armand, what are you eating? Just straight Look at that salt? Sip, look at that sip technique. Armand, you that's can't eat serious. while recording a podcast. First of all, don't eat while oh. you're recording a podcast. Second of all, that's junk. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about New Year's resolutions. You're putting junk in your face. This is how you get a six pack. This is my alpha yeah, for 2023. Right. Yeah. Kettle chips. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Cannot be crunching into a microphone. Apologies. Yeah, Apologies. talk to fucking Mr. Ice Cubes over here. I heard yeah. him all last Mr. episode. Mr. Ice Cubes. Trying to kick you under the table. <laughs> <laughs> so, God. yeah, Nick, it is kind of weird because we normally would have... We're falling off a little bit. That's not yeah, good. Yeah. Normally would be at an Airbnb probably early December, and it would be done already. I don't like that. Makes you uncomfortable. We should maybe go over what the the framework we use because it's actually super useful. Um, we would what? Sp- I think it was over three days. Three days. And Damn. the first day, I think it was like for three or four hours, essentially, we would do these like Pomodoros where you'd work for 25, 45 minutes and then get up and play and take a break for five or 10 and then get back to it. But I think the first part was like list everything you're grateful for for the whole year, like everything that happened, like go through your calendar, go through your text messages, go through your emails, like try to figure out find, go social media, everything that was awesome, list it out. And then maybe- uh, And you have to experience it. That's the key. That's so the hold ticket. on, like are there, there's like a, a list of written prompts that you're following uh, in no, advance? No, it's kind of a choose your own adventure, but the parameters <clears throat> for that period are just go and enjoy and extract the gratitude from the year. Yeah, so maybe you spend an hour writing it all down and then you go out. Usually where we get these Airbnbs are out in nature. So you'd go out and like, I don't know, sit on a rock and stare at the view, <laughs> you know, for, for a bit if that's that's your thing. Or or just sit there and kind of like go through pictures on your phone. Whatever, find whatever. your jam. Yeah, find your way. And I think, yeah, I think, we, I think we, we talked, talked about, about them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we'd come together um, and kind of share maybe some highlights. Maybe some low lights, maybe some wisdom, like last, uh, like kind of like our money episode. You know, hey, what did we learn? What's what's there to extract from this? How do we turn this into wisdom? And then the yeah. second part, the majority is really the the planning process, and then um, which is a lot of individual work for sure. I'm going through questions. different categories. We, like, like, we had a whole series where we like brainstorm what are good questions to have, and I actually pulled up some of these like. What are 20% of the activities that produced 80% of the most positive emotions or outcomes? What's the opposite of that question? Um, what did you spend on that was less than 100 bucks, less than 500 bucks, less than 1,000 bucks? That increased happiness might give you clues for like what you should spend your money on. Um, what are the craziest, oddest, and weirdest things I could do? How do I 10x my active income? Um, you know, let's see. What would I, oh, what would I want to do, have, and be if I had $100 million? Like there, we had a list of like 20 questions just to get your mind going before you kind of settled in on your on your goals. And then I think the, the last part was the most fun. So the last part was like, let's say you were doing your goals for the year or the quarter and you had a question or an issue, or you just wanted to say like, are these goals good? We did a little hot seat. So the person would just like basically present their problem or their thing that they're gonna try to accomplish. And everyone would kind of, no phones, no distractions, just kind of uh, focus on that person and maybe challenge, challenge. their ideas um, or give them help towards it. And it's it's amazing when you put like three or four of your friends that are pretty smart 
and focus them in on just a specific question or a goal, like how much you can actually uh, pull out in just like 30, 45 minutes um, with focused attention. So I know. I want to, I want to, I want to do this now. Okay. Can we like have our own little retreat and do this? I, w- I want to do this and have like a quarterly <coughs> accountability for the whole year. I think there was a, I didn't want to rent a castle and do it. Quarterly, bro? Sure. I, I, I want, yes. I just want to rent a castle. It's not that big of a deal. You can't we don't have to rent up a castle. On I, want meeting to on rent, a Thursday. I want to rent a castle. You want to rent a castle? Fine, but not every quarter. We can rent a castle just for the, the New Year's resolution part. Steven, we, we, deserve, we deserve a castle. Do n- <laughs> we deserve this. <laughs> I do want this though. I need accountability. I have no self-discipline other than just the three things on the top of my mind that I absolutely like just can't stop focusing on. And then everything else in my life is like, Phew. Did you so see that's one of our- there's no accountability on you actually doing it. It's like making sure you have someone question what your, what your actual goal is. I think I was, I'm like- adding, I'm adding accountability. Okay. That's why the follow-up meetings happen. And I want financial accountability. I want to roll in. With, and just start giving out like hundred dollar bills, like if you I'm love not checking my, my boxes, it's 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 really powerful for me. And like you, you guys saw it, I was able to do all this stuff when motivated by the threat of financial loss. And then once that was removed, eh, it's kind of back. No, to I didn't my... make any money off this. I thought the bet of you not using your phone in bed was going to be like the purest form of passive income. For yeah, me. I just every I'd, night I get a hundred dollars. Yeah, I'd be more invested in your financial accountability process if I made more money. So you should fail more often. Well, we were all abiding by the honor system there, and we no. have no idea what you were doing in the confines of your own bed. I don't know it's what you're looking que- at. It's not even a question to me that I wasn't doing the honor system. Like, not even a question to me. So may I share one piece of uh, context as well, and then we'll dive in a little more. Where a big part of this idea came from, uh, we have a friend, Jason Adams, and... Um, he had a, a mentor uh, figure in his life, uh, a billionaire. I remember he told me this story. He said, I got the chance to kind of like get to know this billionaire. And he's a great question asker. And uh, he decided to ask the guy like, you know, give it to me. What's the thing? What's the one thing? And the guy said, um, every year, non-negotiable, three to five days, usually solo. Um, I do this retreat personal personal time go deep on myself review the year plan the next it's non-negotiable it must happen every time and i think i've done this now maybe seven or eight times and out of those seven or eight only three or four half of them have been with the crew with friends or with somebody else i've done it myself plenty of times it's just as powerful so whether or not you listening watching have a crew around you to do this with because a Let's be honest, like this is weird. Like this is really weird. This is this is this is billionaire behavior. That's where it came from, right? It's like something you do when you want to find the edge in life and create a, a magnificent existence for yourself that is intentional, right? And it, it's it's a it's a deep process. And so it's not what the average human being would do. So if you propose this to most people, they're just gonna be like, You're fucking weird, you know, bro or girl or whatever. And so you might need to do it alone to start. But believe me, when I tell you, you start to tell people this is what you're doing and they're going to want to do it with you. So it's profound. And um, we're all billionaires now. Yeah, (laughs) that's the key. So, yeah, I I think that's uh, that's a big part of this. So that's that's what Nick and I have done in the past. But I think diving into kind of like what we're what we're looking at doing next year. What are some things that you guys are thinking about and how are you going to approach approach the year? I have a new question or new framework to kind of apply. So <clears throat> I just uh, recently listened to most of the book, but it's a book called Die With Zero. And I forget <laughs> the author's name off the top of my head. I just love that Stephen couldn't control his laughter. <laughs> he just like, <laughs> biffed at my book title. Um, but essentially, title. It, it, yeah, yeah. I appreciate a good headline. Yeah, it's a good it's a good headline, but he kind of has Bill, like Bill a, Perkins. Bill Perkins, exactly. So he kind of has like two uh, things that come to mind when, when in a, the thesis of his book. One is that experiences, uh, memories are the thing that you should acquire more, 
And I think we kind of inherently know that, but he has this idea of like, I think it's called the memory dividend. Like you take like a big memory uh, of your life, like something that was so memorable and it actually gives you dividends every year, every time that comes up, every time your phone reminds you of that moment and it keeps, keeps paying off. So he has the idea of a memory dividend, which is, which is really cool. And then he also Mm. argues that instead of saving everything for the end of your life, you should actually overspend early in your life. For example, if you have experiences that you want to do with your parents, you should overspend in that area. Um, Go beyond your budget and quote unquote, waste the money on those things now, because um, as probably pretty obvious, like you may not have that time later on in life with your parents to do it. So he kind of argues you should optimize around these experiences and who you want to do them with. And do they require any like physical skills? Are they more active uh, uh, in, you know, physical nature or um, can you do them later on in life when you may not be as mobile? So anyway, just like uh, some new ideas. It's pretty um, cool. So like a pretty nouveau ideology in terms of personal finance. It's pretty cool. Right, because usually you're like, well, I'm trying to save up my nest egg as large as possible so that I never run out. But he's like, no, I, I, I want to run out. Yeah, get to my um, retirement number and then live off my, my, you know, income, income off of that. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, no, no, like if I die with $100,000, like think of all the, hun- th- how, how much experience you could have with your friends and family for $100,000. Like, could have gone fail. to college. <laughs> One year of college. Yeah, yeah. Future. Maybe a state school. Does this guy have <laughs> kids? His kid his kids probably read that book like, what the fuck, man? Well, okay, so he has he talks about that. He says, if you want to give money to your kids, don't wait until you die. Like put it in a trust. Actually give the money to your kids now while you're alive. So that not only can they use it, but you can maybe experience it together. And obviously you could put some guidelines around it to not spoil the shit out of them. But his point is like, use the experience t- together and don't oh, let them enjoy it while you're dead. Like maybe you guys can enjoy it together and give them the money now. That's pretty cool. Kids yeah. can be pretty stupid though. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. God, just makes me think so much. You do all this stuff to accumulate all this money and then you're just gone. And then you're dead. Yeah. And then you're dead. And like, what is this? What are we here? What are we doing? So, like, and there, what is this? There are some things that are really easy wow. to do without, without kids, kids and tough to do with kids. So what do you guys think? I was thinking about bringing uh, the good old post-it notes that we use during our strategic planning. Bring them to uh, <laughs> my... You just have them in your pocket? No, no. Ready? So bring them to... Uh, we're getting a cabin for, for New Year's, uh, me and Yessi and the dog. And I was thinking about popping them up and maybe do a little brainstorming session. You should. The, uh, That's like what I'm experiences. doing. Experiences that you want because with the SO yeah because he he talks about the cost of not being intentional with the experiences you want like you could say like I want to travel more but like unless you specifically say do we want to do this before or after kids when we're 40 or 60 and where do we want to go like kind of just be as intentional as you would when you're planning a business you know as with maybe your life so I was thinking about Mm. uh popping them up during the uh, cabin trip this weekend. And, pretty good uh, idea, my man. See pretty cool. what happens. I want to be more intentional with my time next year. <clears throat> Glad you brought that up. Something I'm really bad at. Yeah, I want you to be as well. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, glad you're looking out for me. No, I mean, I've, I've made like some small strides in this area, but I still mostly just sort of wake up and just like spray and pray. All day. Just like that's bleh. what retired life is like, dude. Yeah, that really actually that's, is. That's what it's like. I love that you Welcome. think I'm retired. That's <laughs> I wish. Um no, I definitely want to do that and I, I want to get my like like I feel like these are probably like related. I wanna like get my level of like overstimulation down. Because I've, I mean, I've talked about this in the past. I have very little uh, memory, uh, very little uh, focus. Uh, I, I am just like, I feel like the last year went by so quickly. Um, and it like actually terrifies me how fast it went by. Steven, you did take TradingView off your phone. 
So you have made great strides, I feel like. Uh, it's back on now, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I, I will say I don't open it as much, though. Um, the, the problem is I need alerts. You know, so... <sighs> I wish there was just a Trading View Alerts app where it just gave you an alert. Maybe I could. I wonder if you could program this somehow. But like, no, I just, just want use a different app. Just use a different app that isn't as intense and revealing as Trading View. I think this is a good macro to topic outside of Trading View. It's like for all of our lives, if we're trying to uh, unplug in a way, you know, there are things that we need to be plugged into, right? So, like, at what level do you remain plugged in? You know, like this is mm. beyond Trading View now. Yeah. Well, I mean. Do you guys want to talk about that now or do you have more uh, resolution stuff you want to get into first? Because I think we, we had like a group resolution, well, right? I, I do want to you hear want, you, want you, guys, you got some knowledge to drop. I do want to hear if you guys have like specific intentions for next year. You know, like let's put it on the, let's maybe put it on the a, shelf for now then. All right. Maybe maybe a better question is like, what is the theme for your year? You know, I, I think of my life very much each year in terms of themes. I agree with you, Nick, that like it's just another quarter for the most part but what changes the perspective of the year for me is the theme like same way as there's like you know the chinese what chinese was your what was your theme for this year out of curiosity um i wrote it down uh, i haven't looked at it in long enough in too in too long to remember the exact phrase but it but it had something to do with transition uh, changing. I'm changing my gender, actually. Um, <laughs> you stole my joke. You son of a bitch. I know. I had to. It's like someone's going to fucking take it if I had to take it myself. <laughs> um, no, it was like, um, it, it was very much like a transitioning into, fa- I'm transitioning into fatherhood. I'm transitioning to a new level of my relationship. I'm transitioning mm. into a new career. I'm transitioning into like really pushing this. I want to push this podcast. You know, there's so many things that are changing for me. And I felt like it was like the liftoff year for a lot of new things that are that are coming next year. So for me, next year is about actually stepping into those things. So it's like um, you're one of a new beginning for me in many ways next year, which is crazy. It's like it's funny when you look at your career, some things can take so much longer than than you think. I, I thought that, you know, you think that you're 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 following the right track so many times that you realize those are just little baby bricks on the way to building the wall that you were intending to build all along in the first place so yeah it's been a it's been a hell of a journey but i'm i'm personally extremely excited about next year i i think next year for me even though the world is a shit storm right now is is i'm really personally excited about it um a lot of uncertainty but uncertainty is a key ingredient of existence itself there is no such thing as uncertainty uh, of certainty like pure certainty i think uncertainty is something that i'm i'm learning to just accept and face and that's a part of it but um yeah stepping into a new career for sure for me what about you guys do you do do you guys remember what you resolved to do last year because i I don't well i've definitely never thought of years in in terms of theme i've never thought of themes for a year but i'm not like poo-pooing i'm just saying that's 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 never been part of my framework a theme yeah i mean it's probably not surprising to you guys but i don't remember what the hell my resolution well i'm I'm trying to still like apply a bit of like the the rizzy forecasting framework to make things a little more falsifiable a little more data dependent like uh, you know, like having a theme for a year, it's like, I'd rather be like, I'd rather make a, like a, something really concrete. Like I You're want like, to stay I under be a five Oh, well, let me, let me clarify something, Eric, cause the theme is just the overarching, it's a theme. That's it. But like underneath that, there are concrete, tangible um, sort of quantitative metrics, right? In this planning process. Certainly so over three days, you would, you would drill down on, on so many let's, different. Let's drill into goals. this. Like, and I know Nick does this as well. And I think that you are planning on, on doing some sort of detox. And I think we should talk about that and maybe even some goals for the year. But like for me, for example, like I had health goals, I had people goals, I had wealth goals, career goals, and fun slash giving goals. These are my categories. Mm. And each person has their own categories. So like my health goal was like a walking a certain amount of steps every day, doing my calisthenics workout a certain number of times per week, 
getting a certain amount of calories burned per week, eating a certain way, a certain number of days per week, drinking a maximum number of alcoholic beverages per week. Like those, these are all quantitative measurable things. Um, people making sure I stick to like weekly date night, men's night on Wednesdays, alfalfa pod was like a goal of mine. Um, having people over for drinks and hanging out or going out, trips abroad to see friends, networking, income goals, um, very important income goals, passive income goals, portfolio goals, career goals, which are the transition goals that I mentioned, like being able to know that I actually took the right steps into transitioning into those areas or the fun goals. Like, I don't know, I fucking went to random ass places this year. I picked up within like a one day, three day turnaround and was like, I'm going to Amsterdam. Like these were goals that were intentional, but also there was room for spontaneity. So if you were looking from the outside, you would say like, why'd you get up and go to Amsterdam, Armand? Or why'd you go to South Africa? Or why'd you go to Greece? But it's like the the, the parameters were there. They were already there. It, it was just like, I, I also like the aspect of like, I don't know quite how it's going to happen or when it, or why it's going to happen. But back to Dan Martell, when we had him on, he calendars his whole entire year in advance. All in advance. He had, All he had in the advance. whole year blocked out. Yeah. And a lot of people find that very limiting. But knowing Dan well and the way he talks about this is like it's very freeing to know what what is going to happen in the next year. So I'm, I'm actually considering being more planned next year. I think I may need to be um, in general. So that's kind of like one of my themes for next year, too, is like schedule this shit out instead of like be super spontaneous. Well, thank you for that extra color, because I think that that sort of like tangible, identifiable stuff resonates more with me. And, um, you know, I, I'm not the planner type at all like that. You know, the Dan Martell thing, I'm getting suffocated even just thinking about it. Like I can't even plan, you know, like three weeks from now, I mean, it's like, you want to hang out with this couple? I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to be doing in three weeks. Maybe, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, like I, I just hate, I hate commitments like that. Um, but you know, I, I think there, are, there is value to everything you're saying, even the theme, you know, like I, I think that there's value there. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not discounting anything, but I, I do like having, uh, this like annual goal setting. Uh, well, dude, retreat. like, uh, so you've been thinking a lot about, um, how you're going to start the year. Can you tell us about that? Like, and, and, and what you generally are thinking? Cause I'm pretty excited. I think I want to participate with you. So what do you, what are you thinking? Cool. So let me just like, uh, cause you talked about yours a little bit. Let me just tell you yeah, about yeah. A, a, my framework a, a little more. Like I'm the type of guy who like, I'm a, a habit forming individual. You see me sucking these down every once in a while. I've, I've picked this up as a habit. I pick up every habit. Like if I can get into something for like 14 days in a row, then I, it tends to just be part of my, my whole system and, I, and it just carries forward. So, um, I've already been doing this for like two weeks already, but it's like, uh, it's kind of like a, we've, we've talked about dopamine detox, I think. And, and mine is like, you know, it's related to dopamine, but it, it's like sort of all encompassing. Um, you know, it's like health, it's psychological, you know, mental, emotional, like my goals are, um, you know, I want to stay b below a certain calorie amount. You know, I think like it's scalable. I want to stay below 10 calories per pound of body weight is, is where I, I, I want to be. And, um, you know, that I think 10 to 12 is like a fair range for, for anybody. Um, uh, I want to exercise a certain amount, you know, like these are all scalable to everybody's levels. Uh, you know, I want to, you like now focusing on the dopamine itself. Uh, you guys have put me on this idea that like we all spend time in front of screens and I, I, I never thought this was a problem for me, but now that I recognize it, you know, after talking with you guys, I'm like, fuck, maybe I should, uh, you know, truly unplug. So I want to at least log out from all of my social media apps. Like I'm not going to delete them, but I'll just log out. And like, if I have like this inherent sort of habit to log back in, at least it'll like prompt me to enter my data, which I won't. Um, I want to spend time in the sunlight. I think this is directly correlated to, to dopamine and, and hormones. Um, uh, you know, and a lot of these things sort of hit the center of the Venn diagram. I can go for like a, and like go swim in the ocean and like this will, hit a lot of these things um dude you said that in the discord the other day you're like we're ridiculous we live in san diego we don't even fucking go to the ocean it's crazy <laughs> yeah like none of us are really like beach goers. I think I've been in the ocean one time in like 13 years yeah and like, 
like I grew up in San Diego, so I was like pushed toward it. But like, you know, like I, I sort of like identify more with you guys where it's like, no, we're trying to like make money and shit. Like I'm not spending. My I, I literally went in one time with my buddy cause he was in town and he wanted to go surfing and he literally got stung by a stingray. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nope, nope, nope. Serves him right. Go into the ocean. <laughs> Well, if ever in doubt, highly recommend uh, Wind and Sea. That's the spot, man. Wind and Sea yeah, Beach, beach, San Diego. It's a great one. Yeah, right? yeah. we drive I'm from up here. I know all the beaches. beaches. Yeah, I mean, I, I know. <laughs> I just don't. I mean, them. I don't know. You might not. <laughs> might not you know what I want to? You know what I do want to do more? That's related to the beach. Is I want to watch more sunsets next year. I feel like I watched so few sunsets, and we have like these unbelievable sunsets here so many viewing locations it's like crazy and like i don't really do it ever and when i do i'm always like god this is so amazing and i feel like very in the moment and it's like serene and i'm like i should do this all the time and then i never do and i, I don't i don't know why but like I, I i don't i feel like it's like a really obvious blind spot in my life i i saw this andrew huberman uh video where he talks about um the distance at which you look kind of impacts uh, your ability to think short-term or long-term. So for example, right now we're, we're all looking at a screen, it's very close to us and it, and it tends to make you think very short-term. But then when you often look at a sunset, you're often looking out in the distance, very far away, and you focus your eyesight on the distance for a long period of time, maybe a couple minutes at a time. And he said hmm. that you could get your mindset in a more long-term view uh, perspective by just looking at uh, further distances and and I think I often get re- you know introspective when I'm looking at large views and maybe that's because um, you know you're looking at a long distance so I don't know maybe there's something to to your thing of looking at sunsets uh, that ties in interesting with, I saw what, what yeah I feel like whenever I do it I am like thinking about the future or something right. big like I'm I'm never like oh god I wonder what's it, it's it's always yeah that's interesting actually I think we Do should that not discount a lot. I think we should not <laughs> not discount the I mean like fi- like looking at fire does the same thing for human beings right these are really? like I, I Oh I love looking at fire It doesn't do the same exact thing in terms of the thinking mechanism that it creates but it slows down time and causes human beings to relax and chill the fuck out like like everyone loves sitting and looking at a fire everyone like the one of the coolest things about seeing a sunset for me is i look around and i see how much awe there is around me how much people stop and look at the sunset and what it does to people it's like it's it's remarkable really it's like people truly are are like in, in a complete state of awe about where they're at. And I don't know that everyone is thinking at the level that like some people are thinking. They're like, oh my God, I'm flying around on a rock in the middle of like infinite space and my star is like <laughs> setting and I'm like moving around it to a perfect degree right now where I'm getting this like perfect, beautiful orange sun and the seasonality and all of that is just so beautiful. But like it, it does create an incredible sense of awe. And I think awe is a big driver for human beings. You can't stay in a state of awe forever because yeah. you just turn into like an awe blob. But like you need banality. Banality is the balance of awe. But at the same time, awe creates that like beautiful feeling of like what is possible and, and, and we do need it. I, I got a question about this. Um, like if I were to implement it in my life, you know, I got a fire pit in the backyard. Steven's got a fire pit. Like I think it'd be nice to go sit around the fire pit and just like chill and sort of like get you know, get outside of ourselves. But then also I would probably enjoy drinking a glass of wine when we're doing that. Um, But it it doesn't tie in so much with this like detox program, you know, like can, like, does it have to be so hard and fast? Can you, can you extend this thing beyond, you know, the first month of the year where you're thinking like, well, I go sit out in the fire pit and have a glass of wine and that's cool versus like being so rigid. Okay. So, I think there's like two things here. I've been I've been thinking this over. Um, obviously, this ties in a lot with my desire to be like less of a like a freaking squirrel, just like ah, ah, uh, all the time. And I think there's two things. I I think there's I think you need like the reset period. I think you need to like just clean the table off, 
but then I think you have to have like maintenance as well going forward. Like I don't think you want to like clean the table off, binge, clean the table off again, binge, and just keep doing that. Um, I think there's a way to do this where you sort of reset everything, start with a clean slate, and then you have like much in the same way that I don't know if Nick, you still like do the fast like quarterly, but you do the same thing where you have like a, a daily, weekly, like kind of month or quarterly thing that you do for for maintenance, which I want to get into. So I think the idea is that you, you, you do the fast and then you set like, I think you set aside like an hour a day for something, one day a week for something, and then one week a quarter for something. So basically you rest like an hour a day, a day, uh, a day, a week, and like a week per quarter. And that like kind of keeps the, the thing going. So I think there's two things there and we can talk about both of them. But the first thing is the, the is the reset, the is, reset is the detox. Yeah. yeah. Huberman had an interesting, I liked it. He didn't overblow it. It was just like, I can see the value in the detox. And I think that the more addicted you are to dopamine, the more the detox is helpful, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And Huberman is like freaking dialed in. He doesn't need a detox like this exactly. guy is ultra exactly. disciplined yeah so, so i think we yeah. all do so for uh, for our sake and for the sake of the discord users what would a detox look like in a reasonable way like let's just say the four of us not not including you know the discord user but they can jump in for sure in the conversation but like what what should that look like for our sake okay so step one is the first thing we have to agree to is time yeah duration like how yeah so most people say like the minimum is like 12 days and like for people who are really fucked up they say like 90. Damn. so i'll do 12. i don't days. think we need to do a i've <laughs> done a i've done a 90 before of just like the most high stimulation stuff and it it's it's actually kind of incredible um like I went 90 days one time with no sex, no porn and no video games. Okay. Hold on. What's wrong with sex? Like, I don't understand that already. It's, that's earned dopamine. If you're, yeah, it's no, 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 no. It's, it's, it, I'm not making a moral judgment about it, but it is like, it's like, it's like you, you quit like, like smoking cigarettes, but like you take a puff of a vape occasionally and it's just you're 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 like you're trying to clean out a pathway. Like the point is like you're trying to reset this pathway in your brain, and it, it like it, and it, it's the same pathway for a lot of stuff, right? So you're just like reactivating it with something that's like a very similar activity. And like 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 sex is a super like that's like the most crazy thing that Let's, happens. Can we just brain, get all right? the cards on the table and then we can decide which cards we want to take? Cause I think that one is going to, we could talk for 45 minutes. on. Okay. That are one, you guys okay doing, are you guys okay doing 12 days? 12 uh, days. No, if that's the minimum, then that's the 12 the days of detox, but um, I'm, that's the I'm, minimum. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, fine. I'm trying like, to get, I'm trying to get a commitment. Let's, so let's go, well. let's go by a category here. If range first. Okay. So if the range is 12 to 90, like, but uh, I'll, hold I'll on, go, I, think I think there's a problem here because I'm not going to go 90 days without sex, but I'll go 90 days without logging into Instagram, for instance. So no, the like, parameters of the actual dopamine. Well, like let's take it, let's take a topic by topic, like like time first. I would rather we'll do a more well. I would rather do a more intense thing for a shorter period of time than a less intense thing, I guess, for a longer period of time. Although I would like to enact some sort of permanent changes okay. you know let's just but start with a like 12 day what can we do for 12 days honestly i think we have to a minimum cut out like hyper stimulative stuff like if i don't know if anybody here plays video games but i feel like we definitely can't play video games i definitely uh, do. i play do. wolf game now you guys can't a, play wolf game <laughs> a new video game um uh yeah i feel like wolf games kind of, like it, it like games that have this kind of gambly nature to them I mean, where you Wolf get rewards and stuff the worst it's like terrible like you're like logging in you're like oh my god how much wool did i earn and it, it's just like that's like really that's like the exact thing you need to cut out of your life like no gambling um no gambling no 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 video games um definitely don't uh definitely don't do that so uh yeah the the, the other thing that's really bad that we're gonna do is like any sort of scrolling yeah. So 
probably get rid of Twitter, um, like at, on the phone at a minimum. Like I think we could talk about like whether we can do Twitter. Like we probably need it for our jobs. There are there is That's like the a lot of, of useful data on Twitter um, that I wouldn't want to like eliminate from my knowledge base. Sorry, bro. Yeah, you can uh, catch up. On day 13. You'll be fine. It'll come to you in the form of a text message if it's important enough. I think we should do an intense phone detox. I think for 12 days, like all apps on our phone that are just not absolutely mission critical to be on our phone that give us any sort of... This detox is a sham if we don't quit social media. for. The- okay, hold on. That, yeah. I, I think the phone version is fair, but like it's it's absurd to think that I can just like get rid of all electronics for 12 days. Like... No, that's not going to happen. No, I'm not saying you get rid of electronics for 12 days. I'm trying to nuke like everything but the bare minimum thing you need in the electronic, right? Um, and the phone is like the biggest source of like ah ha ah, ah, all the time, right? Like what so about the internet? The internet, internet has like a lot of good information on it, like, but it also has a lot of distractions. Yeah, like I don't think you want to browse. Like in a perfect world, like you would not be using your phone to do anything other than like texting your wife and, and stuff and but what about like, my work know, computer what about somewhere? my work computer using the internet like it's valuable yeah work working is fine okay i'm not saying we need to be monks for a week okay i think we can work i think some of our work is like different though like i need to like i i can't just be like oh i'm working and then just be on like trading view on my laptop for nine hours a day right then i'm obviously not detoxing right so we have to sort of like without getting super granular like make an effort to say okay this is stimulative stuff that i need to do but i'm going to quarantine it to only these hours of the day only on this device ideally because the other thing too is to make stuff like less accessible like one of the problems with stimulation is that like it it, it, it's incredible like what just deleting the twitter app and using twitter browser did for me just only that it cut down my Twitter time. No, by like no, 50%, no, no, no. You guys don't you know? get to use Twitter browser during this. You're I'm, not listening to me. I'm not. I'm only making a point about like how important. I'm it is listening. To just I'm just making sure you don't cut corners. Okay. No, 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 no. Like, there's no absolute, like, absolutely no social media usage on your phone during this. Right? I'm okay I like with that. Think is, is I'm good fine. with that. Okay. So we're gonna nuke all that. We're gonna nuke, nuke all it. charts, like 100 percent nuke, nuke. Like, Probably, we should probably nuke all notifications that like we don't really really need. Like I think the notification thing is like you're still really in bad. notification. Yeah, land? I don't have any of those. Bro, anyways. what are you doing? What are you doing? Get off those notifications. Been long. I don't, I don't have. I don't. I don't have any. Look, like, Mister Jump. Gonna get, get you a jump to conclusions, Matt. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't have any notifications other than uh, uh, messages and uh, trading view alerts and, and messages, I notifications, my messages. Are. Most of the day, I usually do uh, do not disturb. So I'm good that. So all right. So we're gonna do that. Um, next big one is uh, drugs and alcohol. Mm, good one. Do we want to just roll a 12 day sobriety thing into it? I think it would be yes. good. I yes. would like to reset like for that. Okay. I think that's a non negotiable. So no drugs, no alcohol. Yeah. Can you guys uh, not hit a vape for 12 days, or are you gonna explode? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, easy. I mean, yeah. Yes, I can go without it. No. Easy. Yeah, that's easy. I think what's harder is like recording a podcast dead sober and, and like, you know, it's not hard. It's just like it's more enjoyable well, if, you, that. if you're sipping, you know, like. Okay. Next thing that's tricky, caffeine. Ooh. That's no, no, no. There's no way that's out. That has to be out. <laughs> we got an addict. to be out. We get an addict. Don't you Caffeine's think this is a sign that you, you need guys. to let it go? It's good for you. <laughs> Caffeine is wonderful, deserves to be a part of everyone's life. No dopamine. I don't know anything about it. Don't you think? Imagine how the science, the jury is 12 days off. The jury is You can't take 12 days off. No, the jury is off. Something that's so good for you? You can't take 12 days. Why would I want to remove it? Do you see what you literally are a crackhead? If you don't exercise for 12 days, you're not going to die. Obviously, exercise is good for you, but like you can take 12 days off. Oh man, you guys don't even know, man. You guys don't even know. It's so good for I think you. We, I think we've identified like an obvious trigger in your life. Do you want to see me go into full blown like a uh, crackhead defending my drug habit mode? Because it's, yes. it's coming. I this mean, this is, is what right we're here. talking about here. This is yeah. the point. No, dude, there's so no way. So you want to do this and not give up your caffeine? 
Yeah, I'll just play some video games and uh, you know. How much coffee smoke do you drink? A little vape. By the way? Like, how often do you drink coffee? One to two cups a day, but it's like critical. 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 Why is it critical? So good. It's critical in your brain. Bro. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> All right. Um, it's a requisite requisite to success. I don't, I don't know, guys. What do you think? Are we going to just let him drink coffee? I mean, I'm. I don't care what he does. I'm not going to do it. Like, this is for me. Like, you can well, do whatever you want. Hold on. Like, you can hold cheat. On, hold on here, EJ. This is this is an as one sort of situation. Well, I'm definitely giving up caffeine. It's like this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Of course, you're giving up caffeine. Is it really that stupid? Because yeah. first of all, that's on the Stanford New Dictionary of words you can't say. Yeah. Well. So. I'm canceled. Like Careful. Literally getting angry. Careful. Was never. I was never. Uh, Okay, no, I, I'd like to hear, like, is, is caffeine really something important to detox from? I, I think so. Yeah. Just the same as nicotine have you, or something. Have you ever heard, I, I can't remember his name, but he was talking about going off caffeine for like uh, like three or three months or six months or something, and then like taking it again for the first time, and it being Michael just Pollan. like... Yeah, like an overwhelming. Yes, Michael Pollan. Uh, <laughs> just an overwhelming spiritual experience, and it just kind of drove home like how powerful this thing is, and like how much you are just absolutely o- flooding your brain with it okay, to the point where that's it barely has an impact anymore. All right, I'm in. That's what I needed. That's if nothing that's else, think argument. how incredibly effective coffee will once again be for you after 12 days off. Maybe you should reset. Well, that's what Michael weeks. Pollan said. He was like, "God damn it, I love this stuff. <laughs> I'm going back." All right. I did the same thing with me when I quit coffee, by the way. I, I gained perspective and I knew appreciation for it, but I got back on it and decided to you know, get off it a little bit. Okay. Um, next thing that's tricky is, is, uh, is TV. That's out. No problem Clearly for out. me. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's easy. easy. I don't I watch TV. I think it would be cool if we just replaced TV with like reading. Like, or just other, just like intentionally put an activity <laughs> when we normally read and just try to do it. Okay. I, I asked this in really the discord though. Um, what about audio books from your phone? This is something I wanted to ask you guys about because I feel like I'm a compulsive podcast listener. Oh yeah. You can't. I feel like I you, always have to be listening yeah, you're, to a podcast. You're off podcast and audio. Not Eric though. Eric can listen to audio books, but you're. I would, I would actually <sighs> count myself out of podcasts and yeah. I would allow I think we should audio books. Pods, no pods. What, yeah. A, yeah. what? Can I replace the pod with music, or is that still just like me? Music's fine. Music okay. is the wallpaper of the mind. I got no problem with music. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, I think that covers all the big stuff. We're still gonna. I think we should still exercise and walk outside and not stare at a wall for twelve days. I well, I got a big fine. question about. Um, what do I replace this time with? I, we're going to have to like hang out together more because like I'm going to have more free time. <laughs> I'm going to need to do something besides just read. It's going to be crazy like how much time you have. Like I did this once and it was wild. Like at first I was just like, uh, what? I think what that's is, the what best part. It's all this space. I think that's the best part of these things. When I did Sober October, I was blown away at how much more time I had. Blown away. Yeah, so like you can't incredible. watch it. You can't like go to watch a movie. That's like a that's like a, a good sober activity. But that's like a are, dopamine. Are we doing hit. this uh, the first through the twelfth of January? Is that what we're saying? I'm starting the well first. First is a free right day, away. so yeah. I need the first. 12th. I There's need some, the first because I'm going to be hungover. I'm not going to do anything anyways. There's yeah, some, that's that's perfect. You're going to be like, I'm never drinking again. It's going to be like yes. just roll right into it. You'll get the first three days be. Uh, Are we only easy. doing 12 days? We're going to do the bare minimum, like a bunch of... Well, I feel like we're going hard on the no caffeine. No These are habit forming. Like you can take it as long as you want with whatever you want to continue on with. I'm down to stretch it a little bit. I would I would be down to dabble. If, I'm going to start drinking coffee feeling, again on day 12. Like, or day 13, I'm going coffee. <laughs> I'm fine. Like I'm going to be drinking again. Let's just see if we can do 12. And then if we do it maybe we're sitting there on day 12 like god this is amazing i want to go 12 is already pretty week. rude because i was going to go seven and like i felt like it was just assumed that we we're going 12 as a minimum so um i'm going 12. good all right cool so it sounds like we have a deal um do we want any do we want any penalties or are we just going to just do it and just, no, you be just like, do it 
Just do it. I'm pretty good no. when I commit to something. I'm hold on. I mean, hold on. You gotta have, if you're so confident, have some. Oh, penalties. oh, I forgot. I forgot another one. I don't know how I forgot this one. Phone screens in the bedroom and like before bed. Hold on. Can we like go you want to have a what's that? Well, the sex thing. You just said bedroom and I just had a physical reaction. Oh, yeah. We should go back to that. No, that's um, that, 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 that you, you can you can have sex. Thank I'm, you. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I would really encourage you to do it. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, it's really like uh I hope. I mean, I you know, can consult with the significant others, but it like really like is it has like a pretty powerful effect on your brain, actually. What about like Once affection? You, you know, like where do you draw the like, line, wanna, Stephen? Like, what about like affection? You can't like show that. You can't like kiss uh, your wife. No, like, aff- affection is cool. Affection is like uh, that's like uh, oxytocin. One of the eff- one of the effects of this actually I noticed like when I just got off like the super like sex stimulative train is that I became like a more like affectionate person. I was like, Oh, it felt good for me to just like nuzzle with somebody. And I was like, Oh my God, like all these feelings inside of me are now like coming out that I think were just like stomped down before by like my little monkey brain. That was just like sex, 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 so sex, sex, sex. We're going to use the, the, time, you know? the Mormon definition. Like you can, you can enter, but not <laughs> <can> pump. Eric is <laughs> <laughs> excited about It's that. funny that you, it's funny that you say that like as a joke, but I think that's are you actually soak, a lot. Eric? I just want to know what we're all agreeing to. Are you going to No, this soak? is the thing. You, you can soak. <laughs> Soaking is fine. <laughs> Shut up. This he is... cannot soak. He no, he can. not soak. He can. Soaking no, is, it is his you... fucking, that's his kryptonite. You can't soak. I prefer. I prefer it. I frankly prefer it. You can dab. You, you can dabble. You can dabble in soaking. You just can't. You, you can't. You can't go off. You're not gonna have sex without doing any work. Yeah, perfect. Like, uh, oh my god, I, that's the thing. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you, maybe you guys would find it a really nice, loving, bonding experience. You know. Oh my god. Oh, Nick is geez. Nick is incensed right now. For those people not listening, but I've I've never seen oh. such an eye roll. Such I mean, an eye roll. not only can he not do it, but he physically can't do it. Like <laughs> once you're in there, you don't just stay. Anyway, you're if if you're listening, and you don't know what we're talking about. You might have to search soaking plus Mormons. <laughs> just Google don't go to, 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 yeah. Just oh careful where you go on the just, internet. Just, yeah, stay away from image searches. But. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, so I, I feel like we didn't land on anything here. Are we well, are we gonna do? No, like you a, can have sex. You you you've never done like no nut November. You never did it. Okay, you know what I would say, and people can't are go gonna twelve get mad days at me for this. Can't go twelve days without it. I think no new partners, no new sex. What do you mean? We all have significant others. I know we do, but I'm speaking to the audience on uh, this one. I think no, that, that doesn't that doesn't count at all for the detox. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? <laughs> That's like you're like, oh, I'm gonna quit alcohol. I'm gonna quit drinking bourbon and just dome cabernets. It's just like it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't no, I'm count. just saying like that pursuit of sex can definitely be like a major dopamine hit. I, I mean, everybody knows that. Like that's different yes, but you life. have to eliminate the the reward function. Otherwise, your brain keeps pursuing like the trigger and then going out to get it. And it like that's the well, thing you're can... trying to like turn off for a bit and unwind. Right. Yeah, everyone. Are there any other uh, big big categories that we haven't touched on yet? Because the the other the other big thing is the screen time before bed. Like you want to eliminate screens before bed, like one to four hours if you're like really hardcore. So you can set a window where like. No screens, like no phone near the I mean, bed. Just yeah. eliminate that. If I don't have Twitter or like Wall Street Journal app or whatever, like any of those, there's really nothing to do on there anyway. Okay. So, so are we agreeing to like two, two, let's, two hour think, window? Well, let's just make it like, um, there's a simple way to make it specific is you can't charge your phone in your bedroom at night. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And like, since we're not doing social media and we're not like browsing the internet on our phone, like we shouldn't be on there anyway so no so midnight kind of to do. no midnight alfalfa uh text message uh editing episode quest uh, you know comments from me okay here's a here's a messages. another good one you're, what you're about, loving this yeah what about like discord uh our discord mm. that's social media bro you'd have to do it like specific times during I, th- this is the tough thing like we get it off the phone only do it on the laptop I but we gotta like work. segment it 
put it in like a three hour window during a work day yeah. or something. All right. I might, exactly. I'll I might do it if it's on my calendar. Like, if it's on my calendar ahead of time, it's intentional from the laptop. That and would there's be a hard stop. Personal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can work that. out the nuances of the, the Discord thing on our own. We don't have to get super micro. Well, but we should like uh, quarantine it a little bit. That's like a really bad thing for me. That thing like is like a huge trigger for me. It's a really great thing and a bad thing. I get it. I think I, I put it in the work bucket. And I can I'll constrain it. All right, cool. Mm-hmm. I think that's everything, boys. Okay. I think that that I, I'm I'm. All right. I'm Eric's, looking forward to it. Eric's I, gonna go play some pickleball. <clears throat> that's what you do, right, bro? Yeah, yeah tennis, tennis ball. ball. No, no, no. <laughs> pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you play the real ball. Yeah, the real ball sport. I get it. Um, All right, cool. This was great. Well, I'm looking so, forward. I'm looking forward to the trip report on this. I think if we, I think if we go all the way on it, I know Mr. Sex Addict over here in the top left of the screen uh, is uh, he's very upset, but <laughs> I mean, that's Nick I for mean, me. So yeah, yeah I can see it in his eyes. <laughs> oh man, I'm, right, I'm curious like what all the wifey say when you run it by them. Maybe we can. Uh, t- well, they're t- just t- gonna. <laughs> I'm just going to ban the podcast. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Reason number 17 to ban the podcast from the sniff. Cancel, cancel the pod. All right. Not I like it. Any um, this is great. Right, boys, cool. If you want to participate with us, let us know in the lounge. And um, let's make this a real thing. 12 days. Let's get it, Alfalfa. Reset and the brand, he's boys. gone. We love you. All this right. Bye, Eric. Let's <laughs> detox. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Be safe. Um, drink the good stuff. And uh, may 2023 be the best year yet. Best year ever. I like it. All right. See you, guys. I'll see you. Bye. Bye.